Hi, I'm Matt Sweeney, and I grow hops. Well, this is a hops plant, and these things will grow as tall as the trellis as I can build them, but uh, they will grow 30 feet and higher, and uh, come end of August, beginning of September, uh, we come out here and pick all the cones to make beer out of them. Each plant produces about a pound or two, um, which translates into a, a, about a barrel of regular beer. And a stronger beer like an IPA can take up to around 10 pounds of hops. We give the hop plants a support trellis and then we put string up in the spring and they spend the whole summer climbing the, the string to get to the top to, to harvest. And then um, what we find is that they do all of their growth in the daytime and then they do all their twisting in the nighttime and they, they actually twist in a clockwise fashion following the sun. Well, the hops have really taken a beating with the extreme temperature changes this past week. We've gone from 70 down to below 30 into freezing temperatures at night. So we can really see the wilting, but uh, they are hybridized in order to be strong and stay healthy even with infection. Hops give me an opportunity to demonstrate sustainability in a number of different fashions, one being the way that we're farming the hop yard. So my choices in the methods that I use to grow hops, I do things like hand picking off caterpillars instead of using pesticides. And we do things like using mulch to cover up weeds as opposed to using herbicides. Um, so from an environmental standpoint, I try to um, realize that this is a little um, environment that I've put the hop yard in and trying to be friendly with the, the neighbors that already live here. Another aspect of running a sustainable hop yard is that I try to share all the information with the other hop growers to try to promote um, growing hops as a local viable business. I'm involved with uh, Wisconsin Hop Cooperative. And this is a group of Midwest area hop growers. This serves our, our needs for being able to process and sell to local brewmasters in Wisconsin and the Midwest. And it's a social occasion. So, and have some beer. Besides for making beer, it's also used in a number of uh, food industries for its um, antibacterial properties. Those being the cheese making industry. And it's also used in chicken feed. And it's also used in personal care products like deodorant, shampoo, soap. Um, a lot of people use it in teas. It's used for lactating mothers as a thing to stimulate new mothers breastfeeding. Uh, they put it in hot pillows. And what it has is um, sedative properties. It was used in the past with medicinal purposes a sore stomach, a headache, getting put in a tea form and consumed that way and it will make you very sleepy. In the fall when we harvest, um, I get together a group of uh, volunteer event staff and I get a bunch of um, breweries to donate beer and together with the beer and the staff we come out and we pick hops and all the hop cones um, are organized by variety and then I dry them here on the farm and then we actually take the dried cones and I get those processed into hop pellets through the cooperative which put them in a form that the brewers can use. Hey you see this guy back here? He thinks he's producing this video here but uh, last week he somehow lost all the data, uh, the recordings in the video, and so I'm putting him to work. All right, Roger. <laughs>